counterfeits find their way into the Kenyan market. The day will be marked with the launch of the Recordation Program, an innovation that will enable businesses and consumers to identify counterfeits from an electronic database. Say no to counterfeits for your prosperity, health and safety. This event will be live on KBC Channel 1. As campaign intensified for the upcoming general election, what does all this mean for you, the voter? What do the candidates have to offer? How prepared are agencies charged with the election process? Join John Curia and Safina Cheng on Kenya Decides. This and every Tuesday from 10 p.m. on KBC Channel 1 as we unpack elections 2022 with a panel of various stakeholders. Make informed electoral decisions. the 14th of June 2022 time 9 p.m. East African the program KBC Prime Edition our socials at KBC Channel 1 my Twitter handle at Tomboy at 24 hashtag Prime Edition and it begins right now Pain at the pump. Fuel prices spike to an all-time high of nine shillings a litre. President Uhuru Kenyatta commissions construction of a 600-bed capacity neuropsychiatric hospital. Questionable academic peppers. Machakos gubernatorial aspirant Wavinia Ndeti joins list of aspirants facing disputes over authenticity of their degrees. Well, thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Boy, our sign language interpreter tonight is Susan Thuku. And uh, just a reminder, a little later on at the tail end of this live broadcast, my colleague JJ Kioria is hosting a panel and the topic of discussion tonight on Kenya Decides is media coverage and women in politics. Let's get into the power story, the cost of living is expected to surge further after the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, EPRA, increased fuel prices by nine shillings for super petrol, diesel, as well as kerosene in its latest review. EPRA Director General Daniel Kiptu said that the hike would have been as much as 25 shillings were it not for fuel subsidy program by the government under the new prices expected to come into force at midnight. A litre of petrol in Nairobi will cost 159 shillings, uh, while diesel will retail at 140 shillings. Let's look at that report in more detail. At the stroke of midnight, fuel prices are expected to hit another high following the latest round of reviews by the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority. Under the new prices, a litre of super petrol will be cheapest in Mombasa, retailing at 156 shillings and 86 cents, diesel at 137 shillings and 76 cents, while kerosene will retail at 125 shillings and 69 cents. In Nairobi, a litre of super petrol, diesel and kerosene will sell at 159 shillings and 12 cents and 140 shillings and 127 shillings and 94 cents respectively. 
fuel will be most expensive in Mandera, where a litre of super petrol will retail at 172 shillings and 15 cents, while diesel will retail at 153 shillings and 5 cents. Kerosene will fetch 140 shillings and 98 cents. Despite the high prices, EPRA says this month's fuel prices were heavily subsidized as a litre of super petrol would have cost at least 184 shillings and 68 cents, diesel 188 shillings and 19 cents and kerosene at 170 shillings and 37 cents in Nairobi. EPRA is blaming the costly fuel on prevailing global fuel prices that have hit a record high of $120 per barrel of Brent crude with experts warning that the prices will only continue to climb due to various global geopolitics like the war in Ukraine and rising demand in China and falling production by major oil producers. Regina Manyara reporting for Prime Edition. Well, the geopolitics there are affecting uh, the oil prices. Let's now cross over to Kisumu County where my colleague uh, Weekly for Cage is at this very moment. Weekly, if, if you can hear me, Ypres has increased uh, the fuel prices by nine shillings. Just give us a sense of what the reaction is uh, for people in uh, the great county of Kisumu. <laughs> hmm. Tom, thank you so much. Uh, we are indeed coming to you live from uh, the Lakeside City, Rov Kisumu. And uh, right where I am, I'm on out, um, uh, to one of the fueling points uh, at around Kibuye, which is actually with, uh, just around the city centre. Before we got here, we had taken, uh, we had conducted a sport check across the different fueling points across the, uh, the town, about five or ten of them, about five or six of them. And uh, this is uh, the fueling point where there is a line of uh, motorists that are lining up to fuel uh, their vehicles. If my colleague Martin Kivuti can basically pan around and show you just the stretch of uh, motorists here lining up to get their vehicles uh, fueled up. There is a stretch actually that is moving, like if I can count them, there are about 10 vehicles actually in this line uh, lining up to get their uh, vehicles uh, fueled up before. Actually, like... Uh, uh, my colleague uh, Regina Manyara has put it starting midnight we expected the fuel prices uh, actually to go up uh, that is uh, fo that follows uh, the upward review of the uh, petroleum products and in Kisumu here starting to uh, midnight uh, the super petrol will be retailing at about 159.53 uh, Kenya shillings the diesel will be uh, retailing at 140.75 uh, shillings and uh, the kerosene will be going at around 137.72 and uh, just if I can uh, speak to one of the attendants here at this uh, polling sta uh, rather, uh, fuel station to tell us the difference between the vehicles that were coming here during the day and now this uh, at, uh, particular time. What is actually the difference? Ndugu, utakaribia hapa, unieleze tu majina ako labda, notuambie you have been here for how long? I, I don't know if you are here from the um, uh, day shift. And if you can uh, gauge, what is the difference between those people actually coming to fuel their vehicles during the day and now? Then my name is Norbert Richier. I'm just a attendant at Shell Phoenix, uh, Kakamega Road. Then today, as from by 2.30 p.m., the queue has been increasing due to the, the, that price that has been that has been talked about mm. yeah and we are expecting they are coming more and more and more mm. yeah and we can see if i can look at the line here the motorists that are lining up here are basically the private vehicles what are where are the public vehicles they're are coming, they are not aware they're coming they're coming they're coming public vehicles are coming yeah yeah my tattoos are coming but their time has not yet mm. yeah okay. they will be they are always we put full tank for them and even along there they are there they're coming from there that, 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 that gate. So basically, we are telling us that uh, we can expect more vehicles, more the, both public and private. Both public and private, more and more and more and more are coming, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tom, uh, that is just uh, that is a sentiment from one of the attendants here telling us about the change in the number of uh, vehicles lining up here to be fueled. And uh, we can expect a rush uh, right starting now and uh, up to midnight before the prices are actually, the changes in prices are actually implemented. And Tom, actually that review uh, upward review we can expect it to have a ripple effect on the cost of living because you know that the price of fuel products actually determine the cost of any other commodity within the country
country. These are a developing matter and we'll be keeping tabs on it. Tomorrow we'll be speaking to the public sector and again those people, the hawkers, and uh, we can uh, we will be uh, speaking to them. They will be telling us how probably the, uh, the, the, the upward review of the prices will uh, affect their businesses. All that our viewers can expect uh, uh, on Channel 1 and uh, they keep tabs on us. Uh, Allow me to hand it off, uh, back to you in studio so that you can continue with the rest of the bulletin. Thanks. Many thanks indeed weekly for catch their reporting uh, from Kisumu County. And indeed, obviously, when the prices of oil ceases, then these, these are the ripple effect that is expected. Thank you very much, Wycliffe. Let's move on now. President Uhuru Kenyatta has called on the society to work together towards eliminating the stigma associated with mental illness. The president who presided over the groundbreaking of the Kenya International Mental Wellness Hospital that's in Kajiado West said that there is an increase in mental health cases in the county with almost every family now being affected. Let's take a look at that report in more detail. Kenyatta was at Mbulbul area of Kajiado County for the groundbreaking ceremony of the Kenya International Mental Wellness Hospital. The modern hospital, when complete, will provide care and treatment for patients from Kenya and other nations. According to statistics from the Ministry of Health, at least 40% of patients are admitted to hospital and 25% seeking outpatient services have mental and neurological conditions. President Kenyatta said the construction of the hospital was in line with the government's efforts to tackle the issue of mental health that is increasingly affecting families. Let me say how pleased I am to join you all today as we strengthen our social response to the plight of our brothers and sisters who have for long been suffering in silence from mental health challenges. Historically, mental health services in Kenya have been of very low quality and inaccessible to the majority of our citizens. The president urged the society to fight stigma associated with mental illnesses, even as he urged those affected not to shy away from seeking assistance. We are here to tackle a problem that many of us prefer to brush under the carpet. Lakini like Najua, there is not a single person in this room who I would ask who has not come across a problem with mental health and we need to be able to treat it as a disease we need to be able to remove the stigma and therefore as a nation we must confront it accept it and fight it so that we protect our people and make them useful citizens of our republic the head of state has also challenged county governments to invest in primary health care and more so on matters mental health Sentiments echoed by the Health Cabinet Secretary Mutai Kagwe, who noted that there was shortage of mental health facilities across the country. A very serious problem that affects almost every family did not have a very serious uh, institution to tackle. Our Madare Hospital has been with us for the last 50 years and requires serious improvement. President Kenyatta has also directed that a level 4 hospital be constructed in Kajiado as well as a Kenya Medical Training College to equip locals with the requisite skills. Ini ardhi kubwa lazima mpate pahali unaweza kupata mjengee hawa hospitali yao. Meanwhile, President Uhuru Kenyatta has been awarded the African Gender Award 2022 for championing gender equality and development in the country. While receiving the award at State House Nairobi, the President commended the African Union for recognizing Kenya's leadership towards translating the AU Solemn Declaration on Gender Equality into action by making it a reality for the lives of women, men, girls, as well as boys. The award serves as a mechanism to monitor and reward an African head of state or government who have demonstrated outstanding achievement in promoting gender equality as well as development within those thematic areas of African Union's solemn declaration on gender equality. I wish to express my deep appreciation as Antisana for the award and to commend the Gender is My Gender campaign for this noble initiative, which is indeed an inspiration towards our efforts of fulfilling our promise 
of advancing gender equity and equality, empowerment of our women and girls, and a cohesive, inclusive society, both here in Kenya and on our African continent. Asante Nisana. Thank you. We are very pleased Kenya has been selected as a recipient for the, this award. This is after careful evaluation of the country's report on the implementation of the commitment of the solemn declaration of gender equality in Africa. I thank Gender is My Agenda Campaign Network and the selection team for a job very well done. Your Excellency, getting this far is attributed to a strong political leadership and support of His Excellency the President, Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta. Spread diplomacy, cultural diplomacy. President Kenyatta during the last 10 years has led from the front. The unbeaten path. An award-winning moment there for His Excellency the President. Let's move into the corridors of justice. A 40-year-old man has been sentenced to life imprisonment at Rongo Law Courts after he was found guilty of defiling a 10-year-old girl. Clefa Sotieno, alias Kili, is said to have committed the heinous act at a Nindo village that's in Awendo sub-county on the morning of November 26, 2020. Justice has been served to yet another victim of defilement. On Monday morning, Rongo senior resident magistrate Raymond Langard slapped Clefas Otieno with a life sentence after evidence produced in court proved he was guilty. The accused person to serve life imprisonment. It will be to Yeah, 14 days to appeal. According to the magistrate, the age assessment shows that the victim was indeed a minor aged 10 years. The complainant in this case was barely 10 years old. She was a child of tender age. The minor also positively identified the suspect as a next door neighbor, further implicating him in the crime. Otieno Alai has been in custody after failing to raise the requisite bond of 100,000 shillings in the offenses. Elsewhere, five former Homabi County Assembly officials who are charged with 11 counts, including conspiracy to commit corruption, unlawful acquisition of public property, and abuse of office, among other charges, have been found guilty of embezzling public funds amounting to 27.8 million shillings. The five include former County Assembly Clerk Bob Kefazotino, former Chief Finance Officer Carolyn Sang, former County Assembly Majority Leader Michael Owino Oro, former County Assembly Minority Leader Isaac Ousonya Dengue, and former County Assembly Finance Controller Maurice Amek. However, two officials, including a former member of the County Assembly Service Board, Judy Zomongi, and former cashier Edwin Omondi Okelo are acquitted for lack of evidence. The accused were alleged to have defrauded the county government through irregular procurement. Lin Chalo for Prime Edition. Well, that story brings us to our first break. Uh, just a quick reminder that right after this live broadcast, my colleague JJ Kioria is hosting a panelist of women and the topic of discussion um, is women and politics, media coverage of women in politics. You don't want to miss that. We'll take a break. We'll be back shortly. Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723 or 0734-780-124. To get June chapter 11 as your skis are tuned, dial star 811 star 965 hash. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. John chapter 11 verse 25. To get John chapter 11, dial star 811 star 965 hash. To get John chapter 11, dial star 811 star 965 hash. Our arts and entertainment industry has evolved over the years. It is at such times that our destinies are written. Will we rise up in courage? Or die in cowardice? 
the movers and shakers in film and theatre. Get trendy as we review locally produced films and stage drama every Wednesday at 9 p.m. on cinemas and theatre. Brought to you by the Kenya Film Commission. Film Kenya, capture Africa. Welcome back to Prime Edition. Two voters have filed a complaint to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission Dispute Committee seeking to revoke the clearance of Machako's gubernatorial aspirant, Wavinya Ndeti. The two complainants dispute the authenticity of an undergraduate degree which they say is not recognized right here in Kenya. As Sarafina Robi reports, Mombasa gubernatorial aspirant Mike Mbuvisonko has filed responses disputing reasons for not being cleared, which include lacking original certificates and being impeached from office. Today's proceedings before the IABC Dispute Committee kicked off in earnest as Machako's gubernatorial aspirant of Inyandeti's complaint was laid bare. Two complainants, Gideon Gewa and Kisilu Mutisia, want the committee to revoke Ndeti's nomination and clearance on the basis that the 1995 undergraduate degree she holds in computing studies from South Bank University in London is not recognized in Kenya. They're also questioning the validity of her master's degree in business systems from City University in London acquired three years before the first degree. The degree which is submitted to IABC is not authentic. You can easily go to River Road here and produce a degree certificate under the University of London and then you present it to the, to the Commission for, 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 for University Education. They will say that degree is recognized. Wovinia, through her lawyers, maintains that her documents are authentic and that she had been cleared to vie with the same documents in 2017. The only qualification for a person qualified as a governor in this respect is a university degree. A university degree has been produced. The nature of the orders being sought by the complainant, in my view, will fall within the definition of unreasonableness. The committee will determine the matter on the 18th of June 2022. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mombasa gubernatorial aspirant Mike Sonko maintains he was cleared to vie in 2017 using the same documents being disputed. Through his lawyers, Sonko also argues that his impeachment case is before the Supreme Court. The former Nairobi County Governor was accompanied in court by Wiper Democratic Movement leader Kalonzo Musioka, among others. Our constitution is very clear. Unless you have exhausted all the channels under the law, Wezu Kuzuiliwa to run for any office. The matter will be heard on Wednesday, June the 15th, 2022. Serafina Robi for Prime Edition. Let's shift gears and now move into politics. As Emiola Omoja, one Kenya coalition party presidential flag bearer, Raila Odinga, has pledged to solve the perennial human wildlife conflict affecting communities living in Taita Taveta and Makweni counties if he's elected into office. Speaking in Titoande, Odinga asked Makweni electorate to elect him president, promising to also bring to an end the problem of water shortage in the region. Gishuki Washira reports. <laughs> The Azimiolo Moja Brigade led by party leader Raila Odinga took campaigns to Mtito Andei, Machinery, Kibwezi, Nunguni and Kikima in Makweni County. Odinga promising to solve boundary disputes between Makweni and Tetataveta County if elected the fifth president. Tunaleta mabadiliko ambayo tasaidia watu wetu wote. Na tutusaidia hata wanyonge. Tutatumia mbinu ya kuvuna maji ya mvua wakati inanyesha. Tutajenga mabwawa na vidimbu hii. Ili saa hii mvua inanyesha kwa vingi tunavuna hiyo maji. The issue of human wildlife conflict which has for long been a thorn in the flesh of Taita Taveta and Makweni County residents also featured in the campaigns. 
Odinga promised to prioritize the development agenda of the Lower Eastern Region. Leaders accompanying Odinga praised the Azimiolo Moja manifesto and explained to the voters how the region would benefit. Sasa, Dugu Raila, maombi yangu, mimi kama nitakuwa waziri mkuu wako, nandada ambaye ni madha karua, akiwa deputy wako, mimi nitaimiza yu serikali ya baba, ya kikishe duo courage way kutoka Nairobi mpoka Mombasa. Tunakuomba tukishinda kwa sababu tutashinda. Ile mambo nimebakisha hapa ya stima tukiwa na wale wengine tumalize. Mambo ya wamama tuendeleze. Mambo ya vijana tuangalie. The leaders expressed confidence they would form the next government. Vishoki Washira Prime Edition well, as Mio, Kenya was drumming support for the presidential candidate. Kenya Kwanzaa presidential candidate William Ruto now says if elected president, his government will protect second-hand clothes traders and build modern markets for them. Speaking when he hosted a section of Gikomba market Mitumba traders at his current residence Tuesday, the deputy president said that the Mitumba business is not a threat to the textile industry right here in Kenya, adding that the two sectors serve totally different segments. Here's that report. Alliance leaders on Tuesday met representatives of the Mitumba traders from Gikomba Market. Deputy President William Root assuring second-hand traders, also known as Mitumba traders, that his government will legislate laws to protect them and other small-scale traders if he wins the August election. Kazi ya serikali ni kuinua hiyo biashara yako, badala ya wewe kupata shilingi miambili, upate miatano. Deputy President William Ruto has pledged that the Kenya Kwanzaa government will set aside 50 billion to finance small, micro, and medium enterprises if he ascends to power. Ndio tumesema nyinyi wafanyabiashara wa chini, wafanyabiashara mama mboga boda boda mtu ya mtumba na wale wengine. Shida yenu kubwa ni mahali ya kufanya biashara. Shida ya pili ni sheria ni sheria ya kulinda biashara yenu. Shida ya tatu ni pesa ya kuinua biashara yenu. Tunakubaliana? Ndiyo tumesema serekali hii kwa mapenzi ya mungu Tutaweka bilioni hamsini kusaidia biashara ya mwananchi mdogo Ruto said the kiti is in line with the bottom-up economic model Which seeks to empower small-scale traders Leaders who accompanied him rallied support for the Kenya Kwanza Alliance Saying it is the only government that is people-centered Mimi nataka ni wambia wa Kenya Wakifuja pesa zetu hivo Ndiyo kwa sababu maisha ya nakuwa magumu Ndiyo kwa sababu bei ya chakula inaharibika Ndiyo kwa sababu bei ya petroli inaharibika Kwa hivo hatuna lengine Bali kuangoa kupitia kwa kura Tarehe tisa mwezi wa nane mwaka huu The Kenya Kwanza troop made stop over Satimara Daima and Mukuru slums in Nairobi County Now, there's an item here on citizen responsibility. The National Cohesion and Integration Commission has launched a campaign in Kilifi County aimed at sensitizing members of the public on the need to maintain peace ahead of the general poll. NCIC Commissioner Philip Okundi also revealed that the commission has set aside, set up rather, strategies to monitor and also to track hate speech across the country. Here is that report by Safina Chiangoma. The National Cohesion and Integration Commission launched a campaign in Kilifi County aimed at creating awareness on the need for peace before, during and after elections. During the launch, NCAC Commissioner Philip Okundi revealed that the commission has also improved on its strategies to tame hate speech across the country. To employ what to kill a man. Now, I can't tell you, 
nani anaongeza hii mambo ya hate speech mambo ambayo inaleta vurugu nani anazungumza wapi hii kitu itajulikana na kila siku we have a special tunaita situation room the campaign brought together different stakeholders who pledged to collaborate in averting electoral related violence NCIC mshirika wetu mkuu kabisa eh, miongoni mwa wengine ambao tuko na interfaith tuko na civil society organizations so ukienda karibu kila mahali kote nchini utasikia kwamba kuna hiyo eh, ujumbe wa amani na petition na amani kwa hakika sio jambo ambalo linaweza kutekelezwa na dada moja similar calls were made in Meru County during the launch of the Meru County Peaceful Election Conference Meru County Commissioner Fred Dunga said security agencies will be actively involved in peace building efforts. Tumekubaliana juu ya mambo mengi na pia tukatengeneza mikakati ya vile tutashughulikia eh, amani kuanzia sasa kabla ya kura, wakati wa kura na hata baada ya kura. Meru County Government Chief of Staff Jotham Kirimi noting that the sensitization program will be extended to the youth. Ni wale ambao wako katika sekta ya bodaboda. Eh kuna wachacha nao ambao wanafanya blogging e, katika mitandao ya jamii na wa, pia wanatusi kule wanaeneza habari za uongo. What we call fake news. E, wana, so tumeambiwa sheria ambazo zinaweza tumika kufunga wengine. For Prime Edition I'm Safin Aching Oma. Now, the 1982 attempted military coup saw the name Kenya Air Force dropped and temporarily replaced by 1982 Air Force. This required a change of slogan and the force flag. Tonight, in the military tales, we feature Major Patrick Gishuhi Ngombe, the man who coined the new slogan Imara Angani, which stands to date. Nisi Imano with the details. Patrick Gishuhi Ngove was born and brought up in Nairobi's Kangemi estate. We had grown at the bottom of what we call poverty. I know it, I experienced it. Gishuhi had never thought of the possibility of flying. And, and at that time even to think of uh, even getting near an aircraft, leave alone flying, it was not easy. Until a newspaper advert came through for him, joining the Kenya Air Force after his A levels. And luckily I had the interviews a bit uh, a bit difficult and I passed. He was then selected to do a course on helicopter flying. At the time the Air Force had never operated helicopters. But even they didn't have they didn't have the helicopters. They didn't have the instructor. In France, the flying course was on a crash program. And we used to fly even late hours at night to cover the night flying programs. And both the students and even the instructors, all of us were working tirelessly to cover the program. Upon his return to Kenya, Major Gishuhi became part of the pioneer helicopter pilots in the Kenya Air Force and indeed in the whole country. Also at the time in the country, if there was any helicopter operation, it was very, very scanty. There was almost nil. Helicopters were not that much known. As fate would have it, in February of 1979, two Air Force aircrafts crashed on their way back from an operation in the Kilimambogo area near Thika, killing six Air Force personnel. We took off that morning. We went round and we found where they had crashed at Kirimambogo. Unfortunately, not even one person survived in that uh, air crash. We lost everybody. This accident would propel Major Gishuhi to taking charge as squadron commander. And it was a very tough job. It exposed me uh, to the early management of a squadron. He had to manage the squadron and the trauma the team was coping with. A lot of assistance to get through. I had the Air Force Quarter which was keeping vigil at the new squadron so that we don't get more incidences. After the Kilimambogo crash, the Kenya Air Force had to quickly train more helicopter pilots. We had a lot of work to do in the country. Apart from training, the helicopters we were failing uh, where, where there is relief required. 
we also used to do military mission and also later on the squadron was very much involved with the VIP uh, flights. Years later on the 21st of August 1982 the name Kenya Air Force changed to 82 Air Force. And we were given the new uniform, we were given new numbers, uh, and we were turned now into Air Force. Even a mention of Kenya Air Force, you could be sent home or to jail. Major Patrick Ishu Hingobe was the brains behind these new emblems of the new Kenya Air Force. And I did that work at the very strict supervision. At the same time, I was given the task of designing the flag for the new Air Force. A task into which he put tremendous efforts for it to be adopted. Fortunately, we completed the establishment work and handed it over to the Air Force headquarters to General Mohammed. He was the Air Force commander then. The new 82 Air Force, however, reverted to Kenya Air Force on the 14th of July 1993 through a court ruling. The court gave a ruling that Kenya Air Force has never been disbanded. That's when the uniform was for 82 Air Force was gotten rid of and the Kenya Air Force came back to their own uniform. Gishu, his slogan pick of Imara Angani for the Kenya Air Force stands to date as is the flag. According to Major Gishuhi, once a military man, always a military man. That one I can assure you. Even after many years of retirement, I'm still a military man at heart. I'm wearing a, a, a civilian face, but inside me, there is a military man in me. Major Patrick Ishu Hingobe is the oldest living squadron commander of the Air Force. But what most people don't know is that when the Air Force was reformed in 1982, the flag and the motto, Tukoimara Angani, was his idea. Reporting for KBC from Kino in Kiambu County, Amnisi Imano. As campaign intensified for the upcoming general election, what does all this mean for you, the voter? What do the candidates have to offer? How prepared are agencies charged with the election process? Join John Curia and Safina Cheng on Kenya Decides. This and every Tuesday from 10 p.m. on KBC Channel 1 as we unpack elections 2022 with a panel of various stakeholders. Make informed electoral decisions. Welcome back. Let's now take a look at today's business news with me, Caroline Jenga. Now, the Communication Authority has revoked the licenses of 15 postal and courier services operators in the country. The regulator has said the 15 operators failed to adhere to the laid down regulations. The cancellation of the license comes at a time when the authority has ramped up efforts to discipline errant courier operators and weed out unlicensed players in the postal and courier businesses in the country. March last year, the Communications Authority warned 21 courier and postal firms that their licenses would be withdrawn within seven days if there were no objections received from the public. Pursuant to the provisions of the Kenya Information and Communications Act, the Communications Authority of Kenya will revoke the license for the following operators within seven days from the date of this Gazette notice, stated the regulator in its Gazette notice. This came after the number of private courier firms in Kenya grew to 1,027 in 2019 from 997 in the previous year with sector deliveries up by 22.2% in the same period according to a statistical report by the Communications Authority of Kenya. The growth has been boosted by the COVID-19 pandemic which minimized public movements. The sector has, however, seen a surge in the number of illegally operating firms that have seen the Communications Authority revoke 15 of the 21 licenses owned by the courier operators. 
A notice by the communications authorities says the service providers have been stopped from operating and providing international or local postal and courier services. Companies whose licenses were revoked include al Mikdad Parcel Services, Apollo Express Limited, Roy Parcels and Joha Moving Enterprises, among others. Nduta Mukami for Prime Edition. Now to the agriculture sector, smallholder farmers will be the main beneficiaries of an electronics refurbishment program by the ICT authority seeking to fasten adoption of technology in the agriculture sector. The government is now calling on all Kenyans to donate their unused gadgets at drop-off centers in Kansas City, which will be used to woo the youth to the agriculture sector. Of the Kenyan population, 13.7 million are under the age of 35. This means that the Kenyan youth make up for more than 70% of the population, with more than 35% of this number remaining unemployed. In addition, each year, thousands of the youth are churned into the job market by institutions of higher learning, piling pressure on unemployment. The ICT authority is seeking to facilitate the youth to join the agricultural sector which is dominated by an aging population with the average age of a farmer in Kenya, currently at 61. Where we are in agriculture, as a country, there is need to change and adopt the current trends in the line of technology. But when you go down to the farmer, you realize that the basic requirements to access information is missing. Kiprono says digitizing the agriculture value chain is key to enable agripreneurs to leverage on free internet connectivity to boost productivity. He also urges counties to employ young extension officers who can help elderly farmers incorporate technology into their practices. And the idea here is to be able to provide interventions that are market tested, farmer ready, and poised to provide the impact that will cascade across the food systems. Because if we are talking about the farmer today and you have the average age, in another 10 years, 15 years, who will be that farmer? It is this youth, it is. By so doing, you will really spur innovation. You will spur economic growth. You will make everybody productive. Those in the agricultural value chain say the perception of the youth towards agriculture still remains dismal. For the agricultural sector, innovation always remains a welcome change. However, the average age of the farmer remains at 60, so how viable will this change be? Hibak Said for Prime Edition. Now, Kenya's fishing industry is staring at a bleak future due to the adverse impact of climate change on the country's water bodies. The sector, which supports millions of small-scale farmers, is grappling with dwindling to catch water levels. Experts are warning that millions of subsistent and artisanal uh, that is are most affected worsening climate change, even though they account for 40% of global catch annually. Speaking at a conference on potential impacts of climate change on small-scale fisheries, it emerged that rising temperatures are currently interfering with aquatic habitats and affecting traditional breeding cycles, leading to a lower catch. Experts now say urgent collective interventions are needed to mitigate these adverse effects. The solution is at the local level, where the tires touch the ground. In fact, here I'm talking of local solution, where the local stakeholders, communities are involved. There's nothing like global adaptation. Adaptation is done in the socio-ecological environment. According to marine life experts, modernizing fisheries IT systems and expanding the use of electronic technologies can strengthen climate-ready fisheries management. With the kind of investment that the government is now doing, as well as uh, creating an enabling environment, we are hoping to progress very well so that uh, in a few years to come, we increase that production. Because right now we have a deficit in production, almost four or 500,000. 
Experts are warning that the threat to small-scale fishing is exacerbated by heightened human activities and climate change. And of course, with an increase in temperature, it will affect the oxygen levels in water. It will even affect the uh, salinity changes in water. And of course, in, in, uh, in, in most cases, it will affect the change in pH. pH is the weather acidic or alkaline scenario in aquatic systems. So all this will sum up to affect fish production. Experts say these stocks will remain under threat, not only from underinvestment, but from extensive commercial activities. Speakers attending the regional Ecofish Integrated Program Management Unit here in Nairobi have also said that the lack of policy support for small-scale fisheries and aquaculture are also affecting the fisheries subsector in the region. The two-day conference convened by the Ecofish Integrated Program Management Unit has brought together representatives from Kenya, Madagascar, Mauritius, Mozambique, Seychelles and Tanzania who hope to follow up on capacity needs, gaps, adaptation and resilience priority actions to safeguard against the rising challenges in the fishing sector. The threat to fisheries experts have found out is not only human activities, the threat of climate change looms large. An increase in temperatures means lower fish stocks. Alan Aoko, Prime Edition. Well, that story by Alan uh, brings to a close business and news for tonight. But you can find more stories on our website at kbc.co.ke. My name is Caroline Jenga. Up next is a sports update with Tom Boyer. Have a good night.
Welcome back. Now in sports, Aisha Nasa Baksh is the first of two triathletes of the Commonwealth Games to make the cut for Team Kenya. Aisha secured her place after winning the trials held Sunday in Kilifi County. Triathlete Aisha Nasir Bash booked her ticket to the Commonwealth Games after winning the trials at the Bofa Beach and Bofa Road in Kilifi County on Sunday. The event comprised of a 750-meter swim, followed by a 20-kilometers bike ride, and finally a 5-kilometers run on Bofa Road from the sprint distance triathlon. Aisha won the trials in a time of 1 hour, 21 minutes, 54 seconds, followed closely by Vivian Hillier from Mombasa, who clocked 1 hour, 23 minutes, and 6 seconds. Megan Irungu completed the podium dash in a time of 1 hour, 32 minutes, and 6 seconds. Being first is, of course, a great feeling. It gives me the motivation to keep pushing and not to give up um, and to continue believing in myself. Aisha will immediately join camp with 45 days to go to Birmingham. Hilia, who is part of the Knox Youth Programs towards the 2026 Youth Olympic Games, will also be joining camp to assist Aisha in training. Meanwhile, the lone male participants will be named next week. The duo of John Paul and Joseph O'Carl have been in camp under the guidance of coach Camilla Lydia. So far it has been good at the camp. It's uh, beneficial. At start, um, one of my athletes who's coming from uh, Mombasa had a problem with the altitude, but now he has adapted very well and uh, training is going on well. The Commonwealth Games will take place in Birmingham, England from 28th of July to the 8th of August and will be, broad and will be broadcasted live on KBC Channel 1. For Prime Edition Sports, I'm Daniel Mwendoa. Now, the women's national cricket team recovered from a loss to Tanzania to defeat Nigeria by 42 runs at the Kwibuka Women's T20 Tournament in Chigari, Rwanda. Nigeria's women's cricket team won the toss and elected to field against Kenya as the teams played their fifth match at the Kwibuka T20 Women's Tournament in Kigali, Rwanda. Kenya put 119 runs for the loss of five wickets in their allotted 20 overs. Captain Quinta Abel top scored for Kenya with 47 runs from 50 balls that included four boundaries and a six. Player of the match Sarah Bakita contributed 27 runs while Mary Mwangi and Veronica Abuga were on double figures. Rukayat Abdul Rasak and Lilian Ude took two wickets each for Nigeria. In reply, Nigeria could only manage 77 runs in 20 overs, handing Kenya a 42-run win. Salome Sande top scored for Nigeria with 36 runs of 47 balls. Bakita took one wicket, while the other dismissals came via runouts. Kenya play their next match tomorrow against Brazil at 3.30 p.m. East African time. For Prime Edition, I am Daniel Wahome. Shooters from 15 countries are among those entered for this year's Kenya Open Level 3 shotgun slated for Shaba Range in Samburu this weekend. Among the countries listed for the event include China, Egypt, Ghana, Spain, Italy, Zambia, and Senegal. Chinese Pang Jun was a first foreigner to arrive in the country today for the event and proceeded to Nairobi's Kenya Regiment Rifle Club for practice sessions. The championship has attracted over 100 entries and will be based on the rules and regulations of the International Practical Shooting Confederation. The championship will be used to prepare Kenyans for the World Championships as slated for Thailand later on this year. Kenya will field the biggest number of players including Ibrahim Dungo and Belida Okoth among others. Well, that's all we had for you in the world of sports. perfect start of 3-0 in the first half.
Nigeria's Victor Oshiman completed his hat trick in 65th minute when he netted his fourth with six minutes remaining. Then Dennis rounded off the scoring with an injury time penalty. In Group K of African Cup of Nations, Morocco secured a 2-0 win against Liberia to lead the group with six points. Morocco James Holder, Senegal, Algeria, Burkina Faso, Mali and Nigeria with two wins from their first two qualifiers with the next two rounds of matches scheduled for September. Elsewhere, Guinea-Bissau settled for a 2-2 two draw against Sierra Leone despite a leading 2 nil early in the second half after a brace from Georgino. Well, obviously that was an update there from the Africa Cup of Nations. We did things the other way around, but that's all we had Time for you on the day that the Ministry of Health pegged the positivity rate of COVID-19 at 9%, 280 people testing positive for COVID-19. On behalf of the Prime Edition team, I want to thank you so much for watching. Uh, my name is Tom Boyer. Up next is Kenya Designs. Good night from Nairobi.